Hi guys, welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. I'm so glad that you've joined me today because we are continuing on the seven part series, how to monitor and evaluate a project. So in the past four parts, we've been learning about how you can do this all the way up to developing data collection tools. Now, after you've developed the data collection tools, now that is when you have to engage in the data collection, data entry, and data analysis. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. But before we do so, I just want to encourage you, for all of you who've not yet done so, please download this free ebook. Actually, there are two of them, Learn Logical Framework Analysis Step-by-Step -Step Guide and the m and Beginner's Guide for 2020. So as usual, this is a long video, but I really want you to take full advantage of the timestamps which are in the description below. Please take full, up, full advantage of those because it will help you navigate this long video with ease. So without wasting any more time, let's get started with it, shall we? Okay, so what is data collection? You see guys, data collection is really a process of now gathering the information that you need, the information that you use to report on the progress of a project. So as you may be well aware, all projects have their own objectives that they want to achieve at the end of the day. But in order to see whether these objectives are being met or not, you really need to identify them. And once you have that identified them, you develop the data collection tools as we discussed in part four of the seven part series. And then you now engage in the data collection. So you need to collect this information. Okay, now there are different types of data. I know you probably have learned what data is at this point. But I want to let you know that there are different types of data that is collected. You've got the primary data that is collected by a researcher. Okay, it could be anyone. And actually, the way it is, is that in your case, as an m and specialist, you are simply going to collect the data yourself if it is the primary data. Or you may be using enumerators to do it for you. So when it comes to primary data collection, you're using methods like surveys, one-on-one -on -one interviews, or experiments, okay? So the whole point is that for you to know that you are using a primary data collection method, it is where you do it firsthand by yourself, okay? Now, what about secondary data collection? Well, certain secondary data is data gather, gathered from studies, surveys, or experiments that have been done by other people already. So this is a very good scenario, which I've personally um, gone through. Okay, but actually, you know, the truth of the matter is, is when you're doing this data collection, you can the primary and secondary data data can work hand in hand. But what I've noticed is that secondary data will come into play, especially when um, you don't have, uh, when it's quite expensive to collect certain information, okay? And in most cases, it may be beyond your scope. So you might want to use other people's work, but don't forget to cite that work, all right? Especially if these are documents that have been done by other academicians. It's always good to, to cite their work. Okay, so how is primary and secondary data used in monitoring and evaluation? Okay, so in M&E, if you're doing it by yourself, you could, you know, you, okay, let me just read what I've written, but I know what I wanted to say. It says, in m and if you are collecting data by yourself using your own time and financial resources, your own data collection tool and personnel, then this is the primary data collection method. So I just wanted to bring that point clearly. Okay, it's it all comes down to you being in control 
of the data collection, the anal analysis, and reporting. Okay? But if you are collecting it from other sources like the Central Statistics Office, evaluation reports done by other consult consultants, or other sources of information, then it is secondary data. Okay, so this point is clear, guys. Okay, so you need to know these following tips that I want to just share with you, okay? Primary data is usually collected for indicators that you can control, all right? And I have seen this. It's not that it's something that just came out of my head. This is something that is true. Let's say, the, for instance, your target is to have 1,000 people trained, okay? So those 1,000 people trained is a target that your organization has set aside. It's just an example. So imagine you want to have a target of 1,000 people trained by January 2021. So now, the first thing that you know you can do is that because it's in your control, is you can work day and night to achieve that target, all right? Until you actually achieve it, all right? So it is something that you can control. But things that you can control are targets like climate change targets, for instance. You can't control the weather. Like if, if there is a project out there saying that a sustainable environment by 2021, blah, 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 I can tell you that it's not something, those are high level indicators that you can't really control. But actually, they could be, they could be measured by researchers out there who are conducting these regular, regular papers. So now for high level indicators like that, you might want to, you might find this kind of information from the secondary data sources. And like I mentioned, there are so many sources. One of them is the National Statistics Office. That is where you probably can gather information on high level indicators like that. I hope I'm making sense, guys. Okay, so data collection continued. In collection of data, a data collection instrument is used. So that is the, the very tools you developed, the forms are actually the data collection tools. So you could be using um, questionnaires. The questionnaires are just one type of collecting data, but there are different types of doing this. You can also, uh, you, even just observation is a data collection method. Okay, so now once this data is collected, all right, once you collect this data, you are collecting data on all the different indicators in a project. Remember those indicators I showed to you. The next step is now to enter this, inform this data into an analysis software. And the common software that I personally use, okay, and which I have found user-friendly is Excel. But there are weaknesses with using Excel for surveys, especially large surveys, because you want to do a lot of good analysis. So I can recommend to you other softwares like SPSS, which, and then I'll also recommend to you see at the end of this presentation, some of the softwares, some of them I've used, some of them I haven't used. So now what is the analysis? People will tell you they know about analysis, okay? But it is not always done the right way, okay? But that's a debate for the other day, but it's a, actually a process, okay? What you are simply doing, it's a systematic process of applying statistical logical techniques to describe and illustrate what the data is telling you. So simply put, you are trying to understand what does this data mean you are trying to add meaning to the data because for instance what is you know one plus one is equals two right that's the answer but what does it really mean okay does it mean that uh, like if for instance 
we're saying one plus one is equals two. Does it mean that income has increased? Or does it mean that income has reduced? You know, that analysis will tell us whether there is indeed any significant meaning to raw data that we've collected. Okay, so in the analysis, guys, in the analysis, I talk about this in some of the courses which I'm holding, uh, hosting on Udemy. You know, you need to really project exactly what it is that this data is telling, telling you. The best way is to do it through presentation, graphical presentations like the pie chart, you've got the bars, all these things can be done by Excel, but even by SPSS, these things can be done. So the whole point is that you want to bring out that information so that at the analysis, when you present the information to management, they can make better informed decisions. This is another, another example I'm giving you. If you look at this presentation, you have the linear curve, but it's not linear, but I mean, it's, it's going in one direction. So this should tell you something about the data. Okay, so there are different types of data analysis softwares. We've got the graph pad. I've never used this one, but it's there on the internet. Google it, try it. I, I would like to be trying some of these things, but uh, I, don't, I, I don't think I'm ready to start trying new things, but you can try it. It's called Prism 8. Okay, try it, satisfy yourself, see what it does. Then you've got what I always talk about, okay? And um, guys, I think SPSS for me is something I'm quite familiar with. I'm not a guru at it, but I can tell you one thing that this is one of the things that is widely used all over the, all, all over the world. Uh, previously, you could have this software on your laptop, I think, but now they have devised a way of having you pay on a regular basis, okay? I mean, just to keep them in business. So this is the SPSS. You can try it. Just Google SPSS software, and it will pop up on Google. Okay, then there's this other one called XL Stat. Um, I haven't really used it, but I think it is similar to Excel. So you can try it as well. Okay, so thank you guys so much. This is end of part five of the seven part series on how to monitor and evaluate a project. So now we've looked at how you do the data collection. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation, but there's a lot more to it that uh, that I haven't told you, but I'm sure as the months go on, I'll continue, continuously re release videos on YouTube explaining the process of data collection and analysis. So I've been your host, Coach Alexander. Until we meet again, see you on the other side. Bye.